three portions from the Word of God. And from these three portions, there's Andrew and Hillary waving away. Yes, that's good. I thought you were waving at me there, Andrew. <laughs> all right, and we're turning, for, <laughs> we're turning first of all to Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 16. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, please. We're turning to three portions of the Word of God. And we're in Acts 16, and commencing to read at verse 23. Acts 16, 23. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, that's Paul and Silas, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And that's where we're ending there. Now come with me now to Job chapter 1, please. The book of Job, and we're in chapter 1. <clears throat> the book of Job... And we're in chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 13. And there was a day when his sons, that's Job's sons, and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and they took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants. With the edge of the sword and I only, I'm escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I, and, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and shall I return thither? The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And then our final scripture reading is taken from Second Kings, or sorry, Second Samuel chapter twelve. Second Samuel, and we're in chapter twelve. Do you remember the, the sin of adultery and the sin of murder that David committed? And Nathan the prophet brings it all before him. In verse 13, we read, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it? 
because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And we know that the Lord will bless those readings from His own precious truth this morning. There's one thought, child of God, we need to keep to the forefront of our minds at all times and in all places. One thought that needs to be here at all times, not just on Sundays, at all times and in all places. And it's this. We need to be careful, more than careful, as to how we live our lives. And we need to be more than careful as to how we conduct our character. The reason, the reason is because we're the children of God, yes. But here's another reason. Another reason is this, child of God. You and I are under constant surveillance of those who are not saved. You and I this morning, child of God, never forget this. We are under the constant surveillance of those folk who are not saved. People who don't lift their Bible, people who don't look at their Bible, people who don't open their Bible, ah, but they're watching. They're watching you, child of God. And they're watching me. And because we name the name of Christ, they're watching every move we make. And because we name the name of Christ, child of God, they're watching every step we take. You couldn't be careful enough how you live your life and conduct your character. Because we're under constant surveillance of the unseen. And because, child of God, they don't perhaps maybe lift their Bible or read their Bible, but they're watching you and they're watching me as to how we live our lives. And I wonder this morning, child of God, as they watch you and as they watch me and as they watch us, what kind of a testimony do the read. You couldn't be careful enough how you live your lives. You couldn't be careful of how you conduct your character, especially in business affairs. I'm telling you, in business, boys are watching you. And I'll tell you why they're watching you when it comes to business, because a lot of boys fail when it comes to the money end of it. And do you see the money in business end of it? I'm telling you, there's a lot of boys goes down the tube because the way they deal business. Wonder. How does the unsaved see you in business, sir? What do they watch? What do they see when it comes to the pound? Because too many unsaved people have said to me, half of you good living boys, you're only good living for a living. Boys, I love Joseph, you know. 
Do you remember Joseph when he was in Egypt? Man, I'm telling you, he was down to the T. So much so that Pharaoh said, Can we find such a man as one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Here's a man who dealt honestly and straight down the line. I remember doing business with a man called John Walker. He was the store man in Turkington Cast. And I'm mentioning his name because he was the store man there for many years. And John was a well-saved Church of Ireland. And I'm telling you, Trevor Turkington said he never had a straighter man looking after the store. Even when Colin and the other fella, his sons, used to go in for getting stuff, John used to check them. Hey, boys, hey, boys, where are you going? Come on. Sign you that out. I don't care whose son you are. You'll sign the stuff out like anybody else. You see, child of God, you've been watched in business. And you make sure you're no stumbling block when it comes to the pound. And then I'll tell you another thing. You need to be careful what way you're living your lives at home to. Godly parenting is a great pattern to leave behind for your children. Too many children have said their house was more a house of a bondage than it was a blessing. I know one home in particular, and it's nowhere near Kilkeel, so you're safe. And the two boys, their two boys, won't go next, go next or near them. And for years, for years, they never bothered with their parents. And I can almost understand why they didn't bother with them. And it's all right coming to the Lord's house dressed to the 90s and a Bible under your arm, but I'll tell you, you couldn't be careful enough in business. You couldn't be careful of living your life at home. And this morning, God wants to speak to us concerning the three T's. That's right. The three T's that do with your testimony. Apart from salvation, which is the greatest possession you have, your testimony is the next. And you only have to mar it once. You'll never get your testimony back in line as you once had it. And that's what I'm saying, child of God, or it's what the Lord's saying, because I had all this to get when I was in the quiet place. Be careful how you live your life. You're under the constant scrutiny of the unseen. But here's the first T of your testimony. God wants to speak to us first of all concerning the trial of your testimony. How your trial stands, how your testimony stands under trial. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25, here we have Paul and Silas. They're caught. They're caught because they were preaching Christ. They were brought in. And in verse 23, we're reading, they laid many stripes to them. The two boys were tied to two scourging poles. And there, and there they were whipped and whipped till there was hardly flesh left on their back. Their backs were ripped open. Their pain was terrible. And you know, child of God, if that was you, and if that was me this morning, suffering in such a way, tell me, how would your testimony stand? I sort of put myself in the mind's eye that as if I'm there. And I says, Paul, 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 what's the purpose in enduring all this here and trying to put up with it for? 
I think Paul would have to bring us to Romans 8 and 18 where he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Ah, the suffering that I'm enduring, it can't even be compared to the glory that shall be uh, revealed in us. And you know, child of God, do you see when you're suffering wrongfully and you're suffering painfully, I'm going to get you into a wee secret. It's hard when your testimony is being tested and tried. It's difficult and it's hard when your testimony is being tested and tried. But believe you me, do you see when you're suffering, and do you see when that testimony of yours is being tested and tried? I'm going to tell you something now. The unsaved are watching. And oftentimes, child of God, here's what the Lord wants us to see. Oftentimes, it's during those awful periods of pain during those awful periods of suffering. And it's during those periods of pain, during those periods of suffering, it's then we can become channels for God to bless through. God allows pain to come. Sometimes God allows suffering to come because child of God, when Paul and Silas were in the prison and even though their backs were red, row, red raw, they became channels through which God could reveal His glory. Ivan Thompson became a great channel when he lay in, hospice, in, in the hospice, dying with cancer when nothing could be done for him. And someone said his ministry in the hospice was as powerful as his ministry in the pulpit. As he lay there, raked with pain, almost blind, all the nurses and the doctors that cared for him took note that this man was different. And child of God, in that difficult trial and in that difficult time, listen, listen this morning, child of God. It's then when we become a channel through which God can reveal His glory. Look at their position, not only their pain. What seemed to be a hopeless place became a helpful place. You may say to me, oh, well, George, I'm in a place where there's nobody else, anybody, no, there's no other Christians, there's no this, there's no this, there's no nothing, and no the other thing. I'm the only Christian. But do you know what Paul saw? Paul and Silas saw, hold on a minute, we're in this prison, but we are, we are surrounded by unsaved, on whom we can reveal Christ. Maybe this morning, child, you're like Paul and Silas. You're in a difficult place, a difficult area, a difficult workplace, maybe a difficult home, I don't know. But child of God, look upon that in a positive manner, and you think it like this. Listen, God has you there as a purpose to reveal Christ unto those who are without. You know, sometimes God puts us in a difficult place. Why? For the furtherance of the gospel. My goodness me, when Paul wrote that letter of joy to the Philippians, he wrote it when he was chained to a Roman soldier. The things that has happened unto me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel. But here's what I want to get at this morning. Not only was there Paul's and Silas, uh, not only their pain, their position, but their praise. Their praise. Here they are. Their, their backs are red raw. Their feet and hands are in the stocks. I'm telling you, there's no blanket protest here. There's no shouting, hi, hey boy, where's my rights? We have rights, you know. Oh, no. Oh, these men live their lives out for the Lord and for His glory. You know, child of God, they chose the better way. They chose to pray as they chose to pray. And child of God, this morning, it's good to be focused 
in the very fact that when your testimony is being tested, and when you're being tested, and you're being tried, I can tell you now, it's then where you can get the mindset, listen, through this, I can reveal the glory of God. Because so many of us would rather moan than minister. We'd rather look in pity than praise. But you know, child of God, this morning, under the trial of their testimony, as Paul and Silas prayed, and as they sang praises to God, do you know what their testimony was? The rest of the prisoners heard them. And when you're being tested and tried, child of God, and I'll tell you, it's difficult to be tested and tried. You remember this. And there's people watching you, and there's people listening to you. And it's during those dark times of difficulty and trials and all testing that we can make the difference as to how we live our lives and conduct our character. I wonder you getting a tight somewhere in your home, maybe. Maybe your workplace. I don't know, but listen, God knows. And the Lord is saying to you this morning, listen, no matter how difficult the day is, no matter how hard the time you're going through, you make sure you live that out for me. Because God gives us the grace to live for him through trial time. But then we came to the book of Job. And there we come to the second T. And that is this morning the triumph of your testimony. The triumph of your testimony. And do you know, child of God, this morning, when you go to the book of Job, chapter 1, you know through Job the Lord wants us to see something this morning. Do you know how you can be triumphant through your testimony? When you can learn to trust. Are you listening now? When you and I can learn to trust the sovereignty of God as to whatever He allows into our lives. I want to pause for a wee moment because the Lord wants that to sink into your heart as much as He wants to sink it into my heart. You can only become triumphant in your testimony through dark days when you're able to trust the sovereignty of God to allow whatever He allows to come into your life, into my life. Because, child of God, this morning, whatever comes into your life this morning, whatever comes into my life, tragedies that they may be. You have to remember this. Nothing comes into the life of the child of God unless God allows it. And it takes the grace of God, child of God, to be able to trust God. And when we read Job chapter 1 and we saw all the family, the flocks, all taken away, Job's confession was, the Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. Those who trust in the sovereignty of God over their lives, those who trust God over the sovereignty of their lives, they know that nothing comes into their lives, nothing happens by random or by chance. Watch Job. All what happened, Job, was this. First of all, Satan wanted it. Satan wanted it. Secondly, God allowed it. God allowed it. Ah, but there's a third thing. Satan wanted it. God allowed it. Job 
accepted it. Job accepted it. Even in the hardest of times, child of God, God gives the grace to help us to accept what the Lord allows into our lives. I remember the 7th of December, 1985, very well. Reserve Constable Billy Clemens and Constable George Gilliland were gunned down at Ballygolly RUC. Dr. McCord and a, a policewoman went out to the home to break the news to Billy's wife and family. Dr. McCord tried to break the news as gently as he could, and she said to him, Listen, doctor, if you're telling me Billy's dead, tell me he's dead, because if he is, he's at home with the Lord, and he's better off than her. I'm telling you. You see, Job... He was triumphant in his testimony because by the grace of God, he accepted what the sovereignty of God allowed into his life. Think of it this way, child of God. Job could say, the Lord hath given and the Lord hath blessed, the Lord hath taken away. Ah, but he didn't finish there. He says, blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord who has allowed it. And in verse 22 he says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. That's being triumphant in your testimony. That's being careful to watch how you live, even in the toughest and the darkest of times. But I'm going to finish by turning you to 2 Samuel chapter 12, because here we come to the third T that does with your testimony. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 14, listen to what Nathan said, the prophet, How be it, because of this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord, who blaspheme. And that's not the trial of your testimony, and that's not the triumph of your testimony, that's the tragedy of your testimony. The tragedy is that you and I, like David, could give great occasion for the enemies of the Lord to laugh and blaspheme. And that was the tragedy of David's testimony. Hey, David, because of this one deed, you've given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And that's the tragedy that has to do with your testimony. How easy, how easy it is for any of us to do the very same thing. All you got to do is say the wrong word. All you got to do is not pay one bill, not even pay one bill. All you got to do is hold back money in some man. And that's all you've got to do to make the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. And I'm telling you, child of God, we can't be careful enough how we live these lives of ours and conduct our characters And it would be a tragedy if you and I came to the spot where you and I give the enemies of the Lord great occasion to blaspheme. And 
Paul says in Ephesians 5 and verse 15, See them that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Oh, may it be our prayer, fill with thy Spirit till all can see Christ only always, living in me. The trials of your testimony. The triumph of your testimony. Ah, but don't forget the tragedy of your testimony. Because once you lost the value of your testimony, you'll never, ever in your living day ever get the value of that testimony back. And that's why we cannot be careful enough as to how we live our lives in front of others who know not Christ. So let's take this word to heart this morning. Let's take it to heart and be careful how we live. And may God burn it deep within our hearts and within our minds.